that's I believe that that's why the Lord wants us to revisit, if you will, revisit. Oh my goodness, look at baby Luke. Oh, he's getting so big. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. Hey, baby Luke. He's listening to the word of God. Amen. 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 Let the children come and hear the word. Praise the name of Jesus. So I believe that it's time to revisit uh, this, this area of humility. And I and you know, in the book of James, it says in James 4, 6, that if we humble ourselves, he's going to give us his grace. And, you know, in Joy, uh, as in her prayer uh, just a few moments ago, she talked about grace and that we stand in his grace. And that's after we have, that's how, after we have humbled ourselves uh, before him. Then we receive his grace because he gives grace to the humble and he resists the proud. Now, what he said to me this afternoon was that worry, doubt, fear, anxiousness, and all other evil works are pride. Mm. And that really, that really got my attention. Uh, you know, if we're worried about anything, if we're doubtful about anything, if we're fearful, if we're anxious, then that is pride. And the and the word says that the Lord will resist the proud, but he will give grace to the humble. And that's what, you know, it makes us stand. It makes us stand firm uh, in, in any situation in our lives, then that grace helps us to stand. You know, I wanted to, um, uh, let's go to Matthew 18, 4. Um, I was, this scripture here, uh, seeing baby Luke there, and his, he's listening to the word of God. I'm in Matthew 18. Um, let's see here. Uh, verse Starting in verse 4. Let's start in verse uh, two. And Jesus called a little child unto him. Well, the Lord says, start in verse one. At the time, same time came the disciples unto him, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Now listen to this. And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. And he said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted. And become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, excuse me. Whoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And so what is true humility? You know, he, he called these children, you know, a child trust, a child trust, uh, Who's taking care of them? Their mother, their father, their parents, their grandparents, uh, their, their uh, family members. Whoever is taking care of them, a little child will trust that individual. And that's how we are to be with the Lord. And that's part of humbling ourselves. Just saying, Lord, I trust you. I trust you to pay my bills. I trust you to make me whole and, and heal my body. Um, I'm, I'm thankful that Brother Fred is with us tonight because he's getting over. Um, we don't know if it was the flu or COVID, but uh, he is uh, recovering. And um, and so we, we give the Lord praise for that. He's our healer and we trust him for that. Uh, we trust him to, to help us go forward and to do his will. Uh, we we know that we can ask for wisdom and he will give us wisdom. Uh, so that that's part of humbling ourselves. Coming to him as a little child uh, would come to someone that was taking care of them, knowing that that person was, was going to take care of them. And we know that he's going to take care of us. Now, in 1 Peter, 
This is an important uh, ver a chapter that we are very much familiar with, but it says um, in chapter 1 Peter 5, it says, likewise, you younger, submit yourselves, I'm in verse 5, submit yourself unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. Now I want you to, now I'm reading out of the King James, but I want you to think about that phrase right there, being clothed with humility, because that's one of the questions I'm going to ask you at the end of the, the session tonight. What does that mean to you? What does it mean to be clothed with humility? So you think about it. For God resisteth the proud and gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Now, I'm going to stop right there for a moment. Let's think about some people in the Bible that, that were humble, that were, that trusted the Lord. And of course, we know Jesus did. We know that as he prayed in the garden of Gethsemane, he bowed down and he began to worship the, the father. And he said, not my will, but your will be done. That's humility. He was, he was casting everything over on the Lord. But who else in the Bible? Uh, we think about the three Hebrew children who went into the fiery furnace. And they went in having faith that the Lord was going to deliver them. That is humility. So humility and faith are, are connected. And when we are humble before the Lord, then our faith arises. Woo! Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Our faith begins to rise up and we, we can do what the Lord wants us to do. Woo! Hallelujah. Well, let's, um, who else in the Bible? There was one man and his name was Moses. And in the in Numbers uh, chapter twelve verse three, in the New uh, American Standard, it says, "Now the man Moses was very humble, more than any person who was on the face of the earth." Wow! And then let's go to the Amplified Amplified Bible. It says, "Now the man Moses was very humble. Look at this, gentle, kind." devoid of any self-righteousness. He didn't have any self-righteousness in him, more than any man who was on the face of the earth. That was Moses. That was the that was the 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 prophet of God that led the children out of bondage and did what God wanted him to do. He was a, a mighty man of God and but he was humble. Now, another word for humility is meekness. Now, this is not being timid. This is not being shy. The word meekness, it, the definition is teachable. So, Moses not only was a mighty man of God, he was a man of miracles. He, he did mighty things uh, to bring out the people out of, out of bondage and out of Egypt. But he was not only humble, but he was teachable. He was teachable. And the Lord taught him many things. And so as we're teachable, and I believe that everyone, oh, Sophia has joined us. Uh, welcome, everyone. We, we've, we've got the whole group here tonight. Praise the name of Jesus. It's wonderful. Um, but as we humble ourselves, then we, we become teachable and the Lord can show us things and reveal things to us. And in and, and the last few um, days, the, the Lord has really spoken to Brother Fred and I about keeping our revelation portal open. And what does that really mean? It means be open to what the Lord is telling you about the word of God what he's revealing to you about healing, what he's uh, revealing to you about um, prosperity, what is he revealing to you about grace and peace and hope and faith? What, 
What is he telling you? And so keep your revelation portal open. And the way you do that is through the spirit. Woo, hallelujah. The more you pray in tongues, the more you pray in the spirit, that, that portal just becomes wide open so that the Holy Spirit can pour into you. And that's what we want. We want to, we want to be humble and meek before the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's read on here. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all of your care upon him for he cares for you. Now, verse seven is the activation or the manifestation of humility is when you have something come up and you, uh, the enemy wants you to worry about it. The enemy wants you to have fear or doubt or unbelief then you just, you cast it out. You cast it over on the Lord. Lord, I cast this situation uh, about uh, this particular situation over on you. I cast it over on the Lord. And, and what does that do? It, it activates that humility. And God sees that humility. And when he sees it, oh, when he sees it in Jenny, when he sees it in Lucy, when he sees it in Joy, our, our George or Freddie or myself or any of us, when he sees it in us and Mary and Sophia, he is going to pour out his grace. I don't know if I said gin or not, but when he sees humility in us and meekness in us, then he's going to pour out his grace Hallelujah. upon us. Amen. I don't know about you, but, but I need that. Yes. I need it every single day to make decisions, to do what I need to do uh, this day. You know, this, this is the day that the Lord has made and I want to be glad in it and I want to rejoice in it. I want to be teachable. I want the Lord to show me things. Hallelujah, because we're still growing. We haven't stopped growing and neither have you. And you will continue to grow and grow and grow in the Lord until he takes you to home to be with him. That's what, what, that's what we want to do. We continually want to humble ourselves before the Lord. Stay teachable. And stay teachable. Then verse 8. This is another thing. Uh, I, I, now, you haven't forgotten about the phrase clothed with humility because that's the question I'm going to ask you at the end of this session. In verse eight, we're going to be sober. We're going to be vigilant. We're going to be watchful because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, as a roaring lion, he's not a roaring lion. He doesn't have any teeth. Hallelujah. He walketh about seeking whom he may devour. But you see, one thing that the Lord showed me about humility was that it was a, a protection around us. It was a protection around our spirit, around our soul, which is our mind, our will, our emotions, around our bodies. Humility is a protection. So actually, it is a weapon for warfare. When we humble ourselves before the Lord, we are using that weapon against the enemy. Woo! And that gets me excited. Praise the name of Jesus. But what he said was, it was a cloak that makes you invisible to the devil. It's like putting on an invisible armor. Hallelujah. When you humble yourself, when you cast every care over on the Lord, what are you doing? You're making yourself invisible to the devil. Hallelujah. And all of the demonic forces, you are making yourself invisible. Whew, I really like that. Did you have something you wanted to say? <laughs> Hallelujah. And so we know that as we humble ourselves, we're going to be, we're going to pick up that, that weapon that the Lord has for us. 
Now, another thing that he said to me about pride was that when we worry or doubt or have unbelief or fear or anxiousness, you know, and right now I bind up anxiety in the name of Jesus. I bind up depression, oppression in Jesus' name. It shall not dwell uh, in you or on you, around you. In the name of Jesus, it has to go now. And I command it to go in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But what he said to me was that pride allows the enemy to come in and to attack. And, and so as we humble ourselves, as we humble ourselves, then we put on that invisible cloak and the enemy cannot see us and cannot get through uh, to hurt us or harm us or bring any type of, of anxiety or fear to us uh, because we're invisible and he cannot see us. And, uh, and I am very thankful, very thankful for that. You know, when you think about the, the three Hebrew children, they, uh, they said out of their mouth, our God, O King, our God will deliver us from this fiery furnace. But if he doesn't, we're, not, we're still not going to serve your gods. We're still not going to. And what did God do? He delivered them. He walked among them. And he delivered them out of the burning, fiery furnace. And that was because they were humble and they were teachable. They were meek before the Lord. Now, in Luke chapter 14, Jesus wants that humility to be in all of us so that we can prosper and, and be in health, even as our soul prospers. But in Luke 14, verse 11, let's read what is said in, in what Jesus said. Okay, let's start in verse, uh, let's start in verse 10. But when thou art, art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room. Now, this is when we're invited to, to come to the feast. And uh, that when he that, that bade thee come, he may say unto you, friend, go up higher. Then shall thou have worship in the presence, in thy presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For whosoever exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Well, now, what is exactly, what does that mean? What does it mean to exalt yourself? Well, one definition is to try to do it yourself. Well, I can do this. I don't need the Lord's help in this. I don't need to pray about this. I, this is something simple. I'm going to just, uh, uh, work on it on, on my own. I'm going to do it myself. You know, that, that becomes, we're exalting ourselves. You know, King David inquired of the Lord. He asked the Lord about everything. Brother Fred and I do that. We ask the Lord, what do you want us to teach? Where do you want us to go? Uh, what do you want us to eat? Uh, we, we inquire of the Lord uh, because he knows what he wants for us and he wants the best for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to humble ourselves and we're going to have entrance into the kingdom of God. That's what it says, because as a little child, we're going to come trusting in him. We're going to, we're going to focus on him. Uh, we're going to look at him. We're going to look up at him and say, you know, you're the one that provides my, my income. You're the one uh, that provides my clothing. You're the one that provides my sound mind. You're the one that provides everything for me, my healing, my deliverance, my prosperity. 
Everything comes from the Lord. Woo, praise the name of Jesus. And I believe that that is what we are to do as a little child, that we're to come to him trusting in all things, all things. You know, I have a word for Lucy right now. Lucy, the Lord would say unto you uh, that there is a situation at work and you have not known exactly what to do about it, uh, but the Lord is going to give you a strategy. He's going to give you a plan. And the Lord says, do not speak um, uh, until I tell you to speak uh, because your words uh, will create your the situation and you want to create a situation that's going to be um, the best for you. And so be very cautious about your words, but the Lord is going to give you a strategy. He's going to uh, give you uh, some verses in the Bible. And as you begin to pray those over your, your coworkers, you're going to see a change come in your situation. And so, Lord, we thank yes, you. Lord for working out everything for Lucy yes. in her workplace, yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. We thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Humility is the entrance into the kingdom of God. You know, everything that we are and have is in the kingdom. Did you know that? You may be in this world, but you're not of this world. And everything that you need is in the kingdom of God. Oh, yes, that's right. We're not under this world economy anymore. If we have a recession, will it bother us? No. Why? Because we're in the kingdom economy. We are in God's economy. Hallelujah. You know, if you haven't, um, you know, we, we wrote a book, our very first book was walking in the father's riches and you can get it off of Amazon. And it took us seven years to write that book. But that book is filled with revelation about God's economy. You know, I know George is an economist. Brother Fred is an economist uh, in, in their professional lives. But let me tell you something. In the kingdom, when you begin to uh, be kingdom-minded, uh, and you operate in the kingdom of God, then, then that's the economy that you that you operate in. And, and so, you know, I, I thank the Lord uh, for all of our economists, uh, both in the natural, but I, I, I love those that are economists in the, in the supernatural realm. Hallelujah. Uh, because God will tell you to give uh, when you have nothing to give. You don't know what to give. Woo, hallelujah. You know, like that woman in, in uh, 1 Kings 17, you know, she had nothing except that little uh, handful of meal and a little bit of oil and two sticks. And she was going to fix a little fire and, and make a little cake. And she was going to eat part of it. And her son was going to eat part of it. And then they were going to die. That's what she said. But praise the name of Jesus. She humbled herself. She humbled herself before the Lord when she obeyed the prophet. Woo, listen to that. When she obeyed the word of the Lord, she humbled herself. And what did she do? She put on that cloak of him and, and, and became invisible uh, to the enemy. Oh, hallelujah. And she began to enter into the kingdom of God, which is a supernatural realm. You cannot see it with your natural eyes, but it's there. Hallelujah. It's around you. It's around you. It's all around you. Hallelujah. Uh, for instance, when George, George, you go to work, did you know that you're not you're not going to work in your own strength? You're going to work in the strength of the Lord. Why? Because we're humble before Him. Why? Because we're teachable. Woo! Hallelujah! We cast all our cares over on Him. We cast every care. Lord, I cast every burden over on You, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. 
Praise the name of Jesus. You know, things are changing. Things in the world are changing. And there's going to be more changes in 2023. I've been before the Lord just, um, just asking him about 2023. And here we see what's going on in China right now. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a serious thing when those protests, uh, you know, we, we've seen it before in, in what was it? Uh, Tiananmen Square. Tiananmen Square, where the army came and killed many, many people. You know, this time the protests are uh, over a, a wider a range of, of territory, but the protests are there and they want that leader out. Let's pray for it. Let's pray for China right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up China. We lift up their people, Lord. We lift up the people that belong to, to your kingdom in China. Uh, we lift up all of the family members that are represented uh, here tonight. Lord, that you will protect them, that you will keep them uh, free from harm and, and any type of evil uh, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we stop, we stop any uh, protest that that would harm the people, uh, that would harm the nation, the country. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we speak your blessings and your salvation and your deliverance uh, to come to China in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. You know, I know that there are many, many people, many um, believers that are in, that are in China and, um, and family members that you may have uh, that are there. And so the Lord is, is bringing that deliverance and peace uh, to China in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that humility is a force. It's a force. Uh, let's go to Matthew uh, chapter 11, I believe it is. Remember, I said it was a weapon. I'm in Matthew 11. In verse 12, these are in, in my Bible, they're written in red, which means that this is what Jesus was saying. From the days of John the Baptist until now, right now, 2022, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. And violent there means full of energy, full of power. But the Lord spoke to me as I read this scripture again. It's one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible because I'm a militant person and you know that. But that word violent, he said, it's those that have humility. They become full of energy and they become full of power. And they're the ones that are going to take the kingdom by force. Hallelujah. The enemy will not have anything to say about it. The enemy is defeated. The blood of Jesus is over your any sickness that, that might have tried to come upon you. The blood of Jesus is over that in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus is over depression. The blood of Jesus is over anxiety. The blood of Jesus is over any type of mental disorder, any type of um, not being able. There's there's something um, I'm hearing from the Holy Spirit right now that um, there's there's one of you, and and I'm not going to point you out. The Lord does not embarrass people, uh, but you've had. In the last week or so, you've had some difficulty focusing and you start something and then, then you'll go to something else and, and it's been difficult for you to complete uh, any, any task or assignment. Well, the Lord, that is not from the Lord. And so in the name of Jesus, I speak to that that lack of concentration, that lack of focus to be gone from you. And I speak clarity to come in its place in Amen. Jesus name, that you will become focused, that you will have clarity, that you will complete whatever needs to be completed. 
uh, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Also, there's someone that I see a right eye uh, that has been twitching and has um, been, you can still see out of it, uh, but there's um, there's something going on with that, the nerve in the back of that right eyeball. And right now I speak peace to that nerve uh, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I also speak peace uh, to um, anyone who's having any type of hit, hip uh, pain uh, from that sciatic nerve uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I speak healing and peace to come to that nerve. And I give the Lord praise for that. We pray over, just put your hand toward Brother Fred. Uh, we pray for complete and total uh, healing for him uh, and energy for him and uh, that his temperature will be normal in the name of Jesus. And we give the praise to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I have some uh, someone who's made a... Um, Oh, it's it was Lucy. Okay, telling me that that little baby uh, Luke was there. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we praise you tonight. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy toward us. We thank you, Lord, that we present ourselves a living sacrifice unto you, which is our reasonable service of worship. Lord, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand that you may exalt us in due time. We cast every care and every burden over on you. We repent right now of anything that we have tried to do ourselves, uh, that we have not given over to you any burdens, any thoughts, uh, Lord, that have come from the enemy and we have not cast them out. We repent of that and we receive forgiveness. Uh, from you in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for cleansing us and making us whole and making us free uh, this night Amen. Uh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus.